and welcome to my playhouse and once again I'm in the data center and um, this is kind of a video because someone actually a guy called Christian from Germany uh, was commenting on my servers about the IBM 3650 and um, was installing VMware ES ESXi 4.1 and I just wanted to show that it's actually possible to install VMware ESXi 5.5 and actually right now the newest version is the one with the update 1 so I've downloaded that and I'm gonna reinstall that on the server in the top this one number one and um, yeah, if you haven't seen my videos before, please uh, check out my channel. If you like videos about servers, we might have more subjects in common. Um, but um, let's get started. I'm gonna turn on the server right now. Oh, that's that's noisy. Right now there is a VMware ESXi 5.1 installed on it, and. Um, I am going to upgrade it to the newest version. Um, I'm just going to go into the BIOS here because I don't want to boot the server yet. This server has two processors. They are both uh, Xeon X5450s, 3 GHz processors. Quad core, and we're going into the BIOS booting setup. Outside of the screen, there we are. Booting to setup, and we'll just go and watch the settings for the remote management adapter. It's really making noises up here. I'm having problems with with cooling the the data center right now. It's so hot outside. Okay, we're inside the BIOS now and we're just gonna go down into uh, advanced settings and down here is the RSA 2 settings and we're gonna I'm just gonna show you that it's set up for this IP number like that so we're gonna go and have a look at the computer okay, here we are at the computer and I've logged in to the RSA adapter on this IP number at the top up here and right now we can see that it's the server is on server is operating normally booting flash or system partition and i'm gonna go into the remote control because i want to see what the server is doing and this is very normally java messes up we are not allowed to do this because the java is not approved by java or the that. So I'm gonna show you that fix. I've shown it in another video, but I'm gonna show you that fix again. And we have to go into the control panel, and this is Windows 7. So to get uh, more options in the control panel, you have to show small icons. And somewhere this Java, here is the Java. Come on. There it is, Java control panel, go into security and here you can add sites that are approved and you have to write http colon slash slash and then the IP number. Okay, and apply, and okay, and okay, and 
minimize and close and try again. And then we get another one. Run. And yet another one. Blah, blah, blah. Accept. But now we get the screen from the server. Oh, I'm gonna minimize that. We get the screen from the server right there. And I always turn this one up. And we were in the BIOS and now I can, of course, move around in here. Um, I'm not gonna do anything in the BIOS, I just didn't want the server to boot, so I pressed the BIOS. Um, but we're gonna load the, the ISO file for installing VMware ESXi 5.5 update 1. And you get that, of course, at VMware's site. <coughs> I've logged in at VMware's site here, as my name, and uh, downloaded the newest edition, which is 5.5, um, with the update one. And, and I downloaded that to the computer, and this is the uh, compatibility guide. This shows which servers that are compatible with 5.5 update 1 and the IBM 3650 model 1 is nowhere near well actually it's, it's, it's near because the model 2 is here. There it is. Um, but the model 1 is not on this guide. VMware does not tell you that this model one is is working. So you could think that it's it's not working, but as you will see, it works just fine. So minimize that. And to to install VMware you use an ISO file. And to load an ISO file from your comfor comfortable chair, you go up to select file and choose, and you find the file on your computer. I've downloaded it to C drive, me, download, and here we are. Here's the file, and open. And it's right protected and mount drive. Now I've mounted the ISO file to the server. So now I want to boot the server. So we're going to exit, oh, exit the BIOS and let the server boot on that ISO file. This might take a while. I'll fast forward if this gets too boring. Now we get the option to install the new edition of ESXi 5.5.0 standard install boot from local disk but we're going to choose the standard install pretty simple And the camera is having difficulties with the black screen again, so I'm gonna zoom a bit out so that it's not so blurry. This is gonna take a while. I'm gonna fast forward it so that you don't get too bored. But I'm gonna record everything. This is pretty boring, so let's go see the monitor at the, at the data center.
And as you can see, this the exact same thing, and it's just as slow. But it's doing good, and it has just one disk up here, 300 gigabytes, 10,000 RPMs. And we're installing 5.5. So, okay, let's go back to the monitor in the living room. So far so good, press enter to continue, do you agree to all our conditions, uh, do I have a choice, I don't, scanning for available devices and it found my hard drive and that's the disk that I want to reinstall on, um, I'm just gonna check, uh, this is the server that it's gonna be replacing and Apparently I have two VMware installed on that. No, they're on the data store. And that one too. So even though this one has two VMware installed on it, I can uh, they're they're not installed on that disk that I'm formatting or that I'm installing the new edition on. So I'll be able to go in on the data store. Oh, you can see that it's outside of the screen over here. Number, I have two Windows XP machines running on, on this machine, but they're on a iSCSI drive. So I can safely format this uh, disk and just pick up the machines again. I'm just gonna make a note of there we are just for I have to remember the IP number and I'm just gonna write down the machines that are on it. There we go. We got that. So now I can choose to to move along here. Just press enter. Cool. Wanna upgrade? We will just overwrite. I don't like the upgrading options. It's always messy. Okay. US oh the keyboard. We'll just pick the US default, no problem. And I'll enter my secret password. And enter. Yeah, sure. Okay.
Yes. Press 11 will be repartition. Cool. So now installing. So it finally completed and it wants to reboot. So we're gonna do that. Booting the server. And I'm gonna go up here and unmount the disk so that it does not boot on that one. soon I have to <laughs> exchange the battery and the camera. I think I'll do this during this boot process. Still booting, fresh battery. So the server is completely booted and I'm just gonna go in and set some options like the IP number. It's not what it's supposed to be. So press F2, oh, down here, press F2. And the root password and my secret password. Network configuration, network adapters, oh that's okay, VLANs, IP configuration, and here we can set if it's supposed to be using a uh, DNS, oh, DHGP server or use a static IP number, and we're gonna set it for a static IP number, and I'm gonna put in the number that it had before. I think this was it, let's see. Yeah, 211. Go away with that. And the rest is okay. IP version 6, I'm gonna disable that. I'm not using that yet. And the DNS servers, the, it has picked that up. So yeah, now it's, it's ready. It probably needs to boot because I've disabled IP version 6. Yes. Oh. It didn't it didn't catch that. Yeah, now it wants to reboot. We'll have to do that. So now it's booted, and let's go over it to my VMware environment and see if we can get this server inside again. I'm just gonna minimize that and that. that. 
and open this. Let's see. Take it down here. Make it a bit smaller. Don't need all that. There we are. And here is the old server that is no longer uh, available because I just deleted it. But we should be able to right click on it and press connect and it will try to reconnect the host. And it's gonna tell me that the SSL certification is not verified. Okay. But we just have to log in again. There we are, and we're gonna get some certificate, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, sure. And we have a host here, and it's an IBM system X3650. And it's the model one because the IBM model number is there. It's a 7979 and uh, it's a B9G uh, it tells you something about the processors and the amount of RAM that the server came with eventually uh, next put it in my data center yep blah 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 finish and then it will pop up here or oh, this one will change color And we should get a new number up here. It's still working down here. It's at 80% processing something. Yeah, it changed the number up here. Let's see if I can connect to the to the iSCSI drive with this server. So we will configure and we need a storage adapter and we need to add a storage adapter and the only one we can add is an iSCSI adapter which is perfect new software SCSI will be added check cool now we have an iSCSI adapter up here and we have to properties and I have to put in the IP number for the iSCSI adapter which I'm not able to remember right now so just hang on for a second let's try this one and we need Put on security. Shop. Let's see if we get something. There is something there. Close. And it will risk it will rescan the adapter to see if there's any partitions and that's the general idea so go ahead and do that and it's in progress down here and it found some discs for me and it mounted them cool so if we go back to summary we have a disc here and it's the right one that's it's an inactive loom mm, so let's mount oh, it's not allowed in the current state okay it's oh it was doing that by itself i was just okay and we have to browse the loom to find the two servers that was on this machine before I deleted the disk 
And I remember that it was number 13. Yeah, number 13 was one of them. So we will right click this one and add to inventory. Fix the name, French. Next, and it's for this server. Click. And that server is being adding, added to inventory. Oh, finish. Uh, have the same name. Ah, okay. So I have to delete the ones already here. We'll just remove from inventory and this one remove from inventory. Okay, and we'll do that again. Install and add to inventory and delete that. Apparently it exists somewhere else. Arf. Then I'm just not gonna add it to the inventory. I might, maybe I can move it from here, just to. The server is off, but we can still see the virtual machines. Okay, that looks like that's a possibility. I'm actually moving uh, the servers from a host that is not online to this one. So now I'm up and running again. And the servers are okay. I have both of them here, so let's try to turn them on. I'm oh, just gonna turn one of them on, see if that will work. As it looks pretty good. It looks like it's it's about to be booting. Yeah, this is a XP Windows XP 64 bits edition. But it boots just fine. I use these servers for 3D rendering. And this is loading 3D Studio Max back, back burner out of the box. And it shows to have eight processors. Pretty cool. Let's 
see what we get for the server under hardware status. We get some information, we get some voltage. Voltage states normal, power. Mm, it's normally not able to tell you how much power it consumes. Sometimes it's down here. Oh yeah, there it is. 330 watts is the server consuming right now. So, I've just upgraded the server to VMware ESXi 5.5, even though both IBM's uh, web page and VMware's web page tell you that this is not possible. And why is this important at all? So this was just a video to show you that it's it can be done. And there's actually no no problem at all. And if you're into servers like I am and some a lot of other guys on the internet is, this is a really good option. Christian from Germany told me that he he got a used server like this for 65 euros, and it's like nothing. It's what is that, 80 dollars or something like that? That's really cheap for a dual core server with eight threads um, that can run the newest edition of VMware Hypervisor. So. There's no reason not to use that server in your VMware environment. It's probably cheaper than going out building a white box and having all the difficulties with that different hardware. It might not be as fast as the newest thing, but this server is... It does uh, 48 gigabytes of RAM. The RAM is getting pretty expensive for, that, for this server model but it's still cheaper than buying a completely new hardware. It does eat a lot of uh, power, so beware of your power consumption. <laughs> Do subscribe to my channel, so you can see me again. Have a very nice day. Bye-bye.